All right, in this video, what I want to do is help you be able to decide which technique you should use to solve a quadratic equation. We're going to look at factoring, completing the square, as well as the quadratic formula. So what I have here is I have three quadratic equations. And what I want to do is I want to help you decide which technique should you use to be able to solve these quadratic equations. So on this first example, you can see that I have a coefficient of negative x squared minus 3x plus 4. And let me just kind of get this out of the way. I like to use factoring whenever possible. So I think it's always important that you can understand if you have a quadratic that is factorable, that is going to be the fastest as well as the easiest way to solve a quadratic equation, most likely. Now, typically though, the problem with that is a lot of students do not like factoring. They want to avoid factoring, especially when a is not equal to 1. Now, in this case, what we can do though is we can factor out our negative 1. So when I go ahead and factor this, I'm going to get a x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now, what I can do is I can simply just divide out because that negative 1 is actually just a scalar. So it's not actually going to be changing the solutions of my quadratic. All right? Now, it's important to understand that. When something is factorable, it's going to be fairly basic to be able to do this because all we need to do is take this equation and rewrite it as a product, so therefore we can use the zero product property. As far as completing the square goes, a lot of times when we're looking at this middle term, if that's not an even number, we're not going to want to use completing the square. And then quadratic formula, of course, is going to be obviously dealing with a you know, long formula of plugging things in. So, I look at this and I say, all right, is this going to be factorable? What two numbers multiply to give me negative 4 as well as add to give me 3? Because I know a quadratic equation, or a quadratic trinomial, I'm sorry, can be broken down into a product of two binomials. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to give me negative 4, but then their inner and the outer products are going to add to give me a positive 3x. And hopefully you're thinking, you recognize, you say, oh, well, that's going to be a positive 4 and negative 1. All right, so now I can apply the zero product property because if you have a product equal to zero, you can apply the zero product property. One of these has to equal zero for their product to be zero. So I set them both equal to zero, and then I can use now my inverse operations to solve. Okay, so again, the rule of thumb that I like to go by is if you have a quadratic equation that is factorable, that is going to be the best technique to go ahead and use. Now, the next te technique we're going to want to look at is, obviously you can see here, this is not going to be factorable. If I try to factor this, okay, what two numbers multiply to give me 77, add to give me 20? It's like, uh, I, no, I'm not, not even going to try you know, thinking about that. So um, that's not going to be factorable. You can't have two positive numbers that are going to add to give you um, a number 20 anyways. So, or at least you think about, think about the factors of 77 it's not looking like it's going to be feasible. Now, so therefore our options are either going to be completing the square or going to be use quadratic formula. Now, I haven't provided the quadratic formula, but if you think about the quadratic formula, if you remember, that's going to be b squared minus 4 times a times c. There's a lot of multiplication going on. And I'm going to want to avoid doing that, especially if I don't have a calculator, plugging all this stuff in, into that calculator. However, if I do have, um, if I do, if I can go ahead and complete the square, and I have my middle term is even, a lot of times solving by completing the square is not going to be that bad. So in this case, what I could do is this completing the square is going to be my basic, um, is going to be my easiest technique in this case. So because I don't want to use quadratic formula because it's going to be really big numbers and it's not factorable, at least across real rational numbers. We could factor this across irrational numbers, but that's a whole number of video. Um, or complex numbers, depending on what we have here. So in this case, um, what I'm going to do to complete the square is I'm going to take my middle term and I'm going to take b. I'm going to take that middle term and I'm going to divide it by 2 and then I'm going to square it. What that's going to do is that's going to produce a value that's going to create a perfect square trinomial. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 squared is 100. Now I'm going to take this value and I'm going to add it to both sides of my equations. Now rather than adding it to the outside of the 77, I'm going to add it before the 77. What that's going to do is that's going to create this perfect square trinomial. Now again, going back to my factoring technique, when you create a perfect square trinomial, that is factored down into a binomial squared. Here, let me show you. 100 equals, let's see, what two numbers multiply to give you 100, add to give you 20. That's going to be x plus 10 times x plus 10 plus 77. Now I can subtract the 77. I don't know why I did that twice. 
to both sides. I get 33 equals x plus 10 quantity squared. So now, what the nice thing about completing the square is if you don't have something that's factorable, right, then you can go ahead and use completing the square by taking your middle term, dividing by 2. Now, you can do that for any middle term, but typically when you have a middle term that's pos that is going to be um, a odd number, or if you have a coefficient again, um, I wouldn't really recommend doing completing the square unless you're really comfortable with completing the square. So now you can just introduce the square root to both sides. We'll have plus or minus 33 equals x plus 10. Subtract 10 on both sides. x equals a negative 10 plus or minus square root, I'm sorry, of 33. Okay? So in this case, um, we're able to find our answer with relatively not too bad, right? And again, we could have used, the, we could have used um, completing the square. Um, but that would have been, uh, or I'm sorry, we could have used quadratic formula, but that would have been some pretty big numbers that we would have had to figure out and simplify under the radical. And factoring, I think it would be kind of weird and difficult to kind of see how, we how would we have been able to factor out that result. So that's why completing the square would have been our method of choice. Now, a lot of times when we are factoring when a is not equal to 1, again, we're going to want to look at um, using factoring, right? You want to understand and say, all right, is this factorable? But we, I know, we all know that students do not like factoring <laughs> when a is not equal to 1, right? I know. I get it. Um, but in this case, you know, we just want to be able to you know, play around with this and see, is there any numbers that we can multiply by um, that are going to add in that would make this obviously go ahead and work? Um, and if actually, if I add, if I multiply that by a 7, this would be a negative 7, and this would be a positive 1, that would actually work out to get to that. So I don't want that to be the case. So let's make that a positive 1. There we go, or a positive 7. OK, so now we're going to have something that is non-factorable, because I actually gave an answer that would be factorable, and I didn't want to do that. So, um, so in this case, this is a little different with factoring. Students have trouble factoring, right? Um, also, completing the square, it, this would be a difficult problem completing the square unless you know what you're doing. So typically, I like to use the quadratic formula. If it's something that's going to give me difficulty or I can't factor it available, right? If it's non-factorable or I can't figure out how to factor it, as well as if it's dealing with decimals, fractions, or other numbers that, you know, it's just not going to be conducive to me to be able to factor or using completing the square. So for quadratic formula, I'm going to have x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And again, these are going to be the solutions when you have a quadratic in your standard form set equal to 0. Okay? So the nice thing, about at least about the quadratic formula, is if you can remember it, it's basically once you identify your a, b, and c, it's just a plug and chug. So in this case, I have my a equals 2, b equals negative 5, and c is going to equal a 7. So now we'll have a opposite of b, which is going to be a positive 5 plus or minus negative 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is a positive 2, times c, which is 7. And that's going to be all divided by 2 times a. All right, so let's go ahead and now we just need to simplify this. So we have a 5 plus or minus, let's see, we'll have a 25. And now here we're going to do negative 4 times 2, which is a negative 8, times 7. So that's going to be minus a negative 56 all divided by 2. Oops, I'm sorry, that's 2 times a, which would be times 2. So that would be a 4. Okay, So now we just need to think about this and say, all right, well, what is now going to be my, now what's going to be under my radical here? Well, if you take 25 and minus it by 36, you are going to get a negative 31. And thankfully, we cannot we recognize that's not going to be in our real number system. That's going to be in our imaginary system. So definitely, that would have been something pretty difficult to be able to try to factor across our complex numbers. Um, we could have done this by completing the square using the same technique. But again, it would have been a little bit difficult dealing with fractions. So in this case, we can just leave our answer um, just like that. But let's go ahead and recap what I want you to take away from this video. First of all, when you're looking into solving a quadratic equation, always look to factoring first. If you do have coefficients, look to factoring out common factors, but always look to factor. Remember, quadratic trinomials can always be written as a product of two binomials. So always look to quadratic formula first. If it's non-factorable, but your middle term is even, 
um, then typically completing the square is not a bad technique to go ahead and apply. And the nice thing about completing the square is it's, you create a problem that's fairly easy to factorable, and then you can use your inverse operations. Um, and then last but not least, I think it's always nice to be able to rely on the quadratic formula. You just have to be careful, you know, plugging in the correct values and make sure you're simplifying everything right. But no matter what, factoring is going to give you the speed and the accuracy, and the quadratic formula is going to be the one that you can use no matter what your numbers are. Um, and then we just kind of like to use completing the square based on your kind of understanding and ability to be able to work through it out. I would use figure in working in completing the square. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are your three techniques. Let me know down in the comments below which one your favorite technique would be for solving a quadratic equations. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.